Hello everyone, I'm not lost, and today, as of writing this script, I beat the DLC. It sure was an adventure, with its own ups and downs, quite literally and figuratively. The Land of Shadows had a lot of verticality, and was totally the size of Limgrave, like Miyazaki said it was. And in general, exploring the Shadow Realm was really fun. It felt like a new game instead of an expansion to Elden Ring. Some NPCs were real charmers, and some were real stinkers. And most bosses were really fun, and some were not. But that's to be expected, not everyone can like all bosses. So let's get to it. Upon Radan and Moog's defeat, Needle Light... Needle Light? Needle Knight Leta will appear near Mikola's withered arm. She told me to touch it, not the way Moog touches it. And upon touching the arm, I got transported to the Land of Shadows. Upon arriving in the Land of Shadows, I immediately got harassed by the locals. And behold, fire! Upon reaching my first Mikola cross, I entered the cave near it, which led to the entrance of Bellarat. The dungeon itself was alright. I haven't found any new DLC items, which suck, but I did find something way more exciting. The first DLC boss, the Divine Beast Dancing Lion. It truly was a fun fight and a visual spectacle to behold. The DLC started strong with an amazing boss. I genuinely love fighting the Divine Beast. Upon its defeat, it also drops its head. Before I went to Castle Ensis, I heard of a particular knight that was slaughtering people who newly entered the Realm of Shadows. And I wanted to see what the hubbub was about. I'll let the clip do the talking. So, yeah, I see what everyone meant by he's slaughtering. Castle Ensis, Moonrithil hit me like a truck, and I risked my life for a broken rune. Still worth it. I got demolished by Relana a lot of times. So I decided to look for some more shadow tree fragments to enhance my defenses. I don't care how hard the boss hits me, I am not changing my drip. I later met the best NPC in the DLC, Egon, and boy do his voice lines go hard. After some exploration, some dungeons, I went back to Relana, and finally, after a couple of hours, I beat it. Not my favorite boss in the DLC, but she does have my favorite boss move, the Twin Moons. After the long fight against Rolana, I went to the Shadow Keep. Upon approaching the keep, it started raining gold for a few seconds. Mikola broke his great rune. Entering the Shadow Keep, there was a hippo porcupine hybrid thing guarding the entrance of the keep. I struggled a little bit, so I decided to explore some more. I got distracted a little bit, and now I'm here. Yes, I tried bail. It did not go well. At all. I told myself I'd fight that foul dragon later. So I went back to the golden hippo, and after some attempts, it goes down.
The defeat of the Golden Hippo granted me access to the Shadow Keep. And there I learned that Mesmer, Mr. DLC Promo Man, is another child of Marika. When exploring the Shadow Keep, I ran into a little secret in a coffin. This coffin led me to the ruins of Und, which also led me to the Abyssal Woods. Torrent doesn't like it here. And here's why. I really like the Abyssal Woods. And I especially like these guys. I played some stealth games in my youth. And doing extremely basic stealth in Elden Ring was a welcome surprise. Hello ghost! Basic stealth aside, Mitra's Mans, the house of the great sage Mitra. Or what's left of it. I love this place. It's trying so hard to push you away with the ten bodies at the entrance. Midra going on some insane ramblings at the entrance of the man's. And the waiter just asking you to kindly fuck off, please. And then there's Midra, the Lord of Frenzy, the boss of the man's. My favorite in the DLC. I wasn't dealing a lot of damage, so I decided to, just like Bale, to put him on hold when I have some more Shadow Tree levels. I decided to explore a bit more southward. There I found a giant hole, and like any sane person that found a bottomless hole, I jumped in it. There I forgot to record everything in the cave. Of course, it wouldn't be a video of mine if I forgot to record something, or something got corrupted. What I really didn't forget to record was the boss, the Putrescent Knight. And I really liked this boss and its moveset, especially the attack where the knight and its horse attack separately. The Putrescent Knight wasn't that hard of a boss and it went down fairly quickly. Upon his defeat, you can encounter Saint Trina and Theolier. You can also drink Saint Trina's nectar. Doing so will. Drum roll, please. Kill you! The ancient ruins of Rao are my least favorite location in the DLC. I'll give you that, it looks great. But I feel like the location is kind of boring. One of the cool things about this location, though, is Crucible Knight Devonia. I love the Crucible Knights. I think they're really cool. And seeing one here was a pleasant surprise. Love this fight. I also spent a really long time searching for the Ruins of Rao map, only for it to be on the lower side of the area. And also I made it to the Death Catacomb. This is the best catacomb in the game. Totally functional. No bug here. After clearing the Basilisk Statue Catacomb, I went to the Church of the Bud to face against Romina. And she was pretty easy, just stay close and BAM! VICTORY! Romina down. I needed to get my hands on Mesmer's skinling to burn the ceiling tree. And so I journeyed back to the Shadow Keep in order to find Mesmer. And I just couldn't find him. I don't know if I'm stupid, I probably am, but I couldn't find out where he is in the keep. I got so lost I wound up in the Shadow Trees arena. I am not kidding. How? I don't know, I thought this elevator would go up, but it went down. The shadow tree is a tree. Duh. So burn it. Didn't like the transitionary move to phase 3, but other than that, this boss is amazing.
Still determined to find Mesmer, the Impaler, I went back to the Shadow Keep to find and challenge him. With no success again. I found Commander Gaius instead, better known as the Abenoric Hawk Rider. I'm very mixed on this guy. His second stage is pretty funny how he flies with his hog. I dislike his really weird charge attack. Sometimes it doesn't do a lot of damage. And other times it hits harder than Drunken Stepdad. I beat him using Vow of the Indomitable. Trust me, this Ash just trivializes the charge attack and a lot of his moves. I gave up looking for Mesmer, so I did some other things to detract me and did English quest and blew in both finger bells. Flutes. To gain access to the finger runes of Mir. And is it just me, or does this place remind me of the kiln of the first flame? Anyways, Matter, mother of fingers. What the fuck is that thing? Put it down. Okay, never mind, I didn't. Well, at least it's gone now, and I don't need to see it again. I decided to face Bale again. I summoned Egon for the fight as well. His monologue goes incredibly hard. Just listen to this. Curse you, Bale! I hereby vow! You will rue this day! Behold, a true Drake warrior! And I, Egon! Your fears made flesh! Solid of scale you might be, foul dragon! But I will riddle with holes your rotten hide! With a hail of harpoons! With every last drop of my being! You're missing out on 90% of the bail experience if you don't summon him. Aside from having the best NPC summon in the game, or dare I say, in Souls history, Bale is amazing. Enough distractions, time to get back to the Shadow Keep and find goddamn Mesmer. And I found him! I somehow missed that the same room there's a Shadow Tree fragment, there's stairs going up. Yep, I am an idiot. But I found him, and that's what counts. So Mesmer, he goes fast, but he's very weak to bleed. Second stage is what I love about him. The enormous snake effects are amazing. It didn't take too long for me to defeat him, defeating him gives you his kindling. Use to burn the ceiling tree, which will allow you to go to the final area of the DLC. A nearer limb. A nearer limb? I don't know how the fuck you're supposed to pronounce it. Which I'm not going to do now since I need to kill one more boss. Midra, without a shadow of a doubt, is my favorite boss in the DLC. I am a huge fan of the frenzy incantations, the frenzy ending, but I was disappointed with the lack of a frenzy boss in the base game. He is all that I wanted in a frenzy boss. Loads of madness buildup, chaotic moves, big madness kabooms! 
it's all there. He even has some neat lore, and I think that's his child. It's a spine, and there's a pill bone on it. I'm not here to speculate on this, it's just a little theory of mine. Anyways, the fight is just phenomenal. Loved it. Anirulim, the final location of the DLC. Wasn't a huge fan of exploring Anirulim, but it looks really cool whenever you are in Anirulim. I faced Leda and her little group, I emerged victorious with the boys. but I'll be sad forever because I had to kill more. A little while later, I got the Shadow Tree 20 and challenged the final boss, which is Radan in Moog's body. I was kind of hoping we'd see more Godwin and maybe he'd be the final boss instead of a giant fish man, but Radan's cool too, I guess. The first stage, absolutely gorgeous. All the good marks in the book. The second stage, on the other hand, a fuckload of confusingly flashy moves that look pretty cool, and the holy laser beams that appear after 50% of Radon's attacks. I really dislike the second stage of this fight. Yeah, the music is gorgeous, but the second phase just feels like a personification of the random bullshit go meme. about Mikola because I knew he was not a great person. The bewitching branch item description told me everything I needed to know, but it was pretty cool to fight Radan in his speak. Or is it really his speak? Since he's in Mok's body, he's way smaller than before. And lastly, where the fuck is Leonard? <laughs> 